Hey there, baseball fans. I am Ben, and I am back with more packs to open. This time we're coming to you with 1992 Upper Deck Baseball. I believe these are the first edition, or the, the first series. This is a premium card pack from back in the day, 1992. Towards the end of my collecting years, I was about uh, 11 when these came out. But Upper Deck was the top of the top of the tamper-proof resistant, anti-counterfeiting hologram logos and whatnot um i didn't really know there was a counterfeiting problem but apparently there was anyway looking here for hologram cards or ted williams inserts and as always looking for some of my favorite players from back in the day sean dunstan from the cubs mark grayson ryan sandberg also from the cubs and nolan ryan and i'll be pulling out some hall of famers as well as our famous um whatever happened to that guy quick for the, for the time so let's see what we get one of the things I either either love or you hate about these is they were kind of randomly packed so that they're all over the place. You can't just flip through them, so it takes a little while. So, Lou Whitaker, Hall of Famer there. Although I'm not going to pull him out. I tend not to pull out some of those. Lesser. Lance Parrish, I think he might be a Hall of Famer too. Bobby Bonilla, there was a time. Oh, first pack, and there he is, my buddy Sean Dunstan. And an action shot making a play. I love this card. Uh, I'm going to put that over side over here because it makes me super happy. I'll add that to my collection. Dale Murphy. This is a guy who I think got a bum rap. He had a lot of good years. Uh, Frank Thomas. We'll put him aside as a good collector's item there. Uh, Kyle Abbott, Murphy, and Ken Kennedy. All right. Fantastic start because I got, again, one of my favorite players there from back in the day. Look at this. Maybe I can get one of the 2,500 personally autographed Ted Williams cards. That would be a treat. Let's see what we got going on there. I gotta tell you, these are tamper-proof and tamper-resistant because they are really hard to open. So there's that. All right. Oral Hershiser, he had his moment. And the son, Rick Sutcliffe, solid performer for the Cubs and many other teams. Roberto and Sandy Alomar Jr. And Roberto Alomar, of course, in the Hall of Fame. But he's been having some uh, tough time in the news lately. So we're going to leave that where it is. A checklist! Woo-wee! Let's always celebrate the checklist, the unsung hero of the baseball card world. George Bell and his Cubs days, which is awesome. Ken Herbeck. David Cohn, a solid career from him. Hence Lee Mullins and Roberto Kelly. There you go. Moving right along here. Let's see what we can pull out of these packs. And they really are pretty hard to open. These are sealed to the max. I feel like the years leading up to 92 were easier to open. And 92 got really challenging for some reason. All right, all right. You know, these were always just really high quality cards. Um, the photography was always awesome on the front and back. I never really liked that they only showed some of the, the years of stats. There's Ken Griffey Sr. Also, the hologram is a nice touch. Anti counterfeiting, of course. One thing that I did notice oh, Todd Van Poppel, there was a time when that was a, an important card to get, too. Oh, there's Cal Ripken Jr. We'll put that aside for great player that he was but uh one thing i did notice is some you know some of these upper deck cards as they got older um they're like made not the same paper as like normal baseball cards and so like they're made of two sides i think and so i had a bo jackson one in, uh, not too long ago that actually like came apart it was really strange so that's what made me realize that there were two different sides to these things it wasn't just Printed on both sides like a uh, normal baseball card. Todd Stottlemyre. Right, we've kind of hit a cold streak here as far as anything terribly good. I know Sandy Alomar Jr., good player, but not making a cut for me to put aside. Willie McGee. There you go. That's Rob Dibble. I thought it would might be. Rico Brunia. You know, I'm going to put him aside. Um as maybe our, where, what, whatever happened to that guy. You know, 
when I was in Philadelphia, I lived in Philadelphia for about 15 years. Uh, Rico Bronia was a, an affiliate at that time, so he was somebody I enjoyed watching and cheering for back in the day. All right, so let me see what he's up to now. Um, another Ken Griffey Sr. Can we just get a junior, please? Nothing against senior, but, you know, the kid was uh, always bigger in the card collecting world. And on the field, let's be honest. Jim Abbott. I'm just like all over the place with how these cards are shaping up here. All right. Not a whole lot of exciting stuff coming out of that one. Got a few more packs here to really make something happen. I don't know if I just pull one of those uh, Ted Williams autographs. That'd be really nice to have that pop up. I wonder if all 2,500 have been unearthed and have come out. There's Rock Reigns, uh, Hall of Famer there. Still not making my cut, though. Let's put it aside. Cooler. Gary Sheffield, good good player in his time, but never quite got there for me. Hector Villanueva, Cubs backup catcher, always liked him. Tony Gwynn, we'll take him. Tony Gwynn, in my opinion, one of the greatest hitters of the modern era. That's the one with his brother Chris. It is kind of cool how. Baseball is like a bit of a family sport, often. Fathers and sons and brothers and cousins and nephews all having the baseball genes run through their veins. Yeah, this is not coming together so great yet. Now, Ron Gant, certainly a big player in that Braves uh, Winning Braves team in the 90s, Rafael Palmeiro, great hitter. A little uh, performance enhancing drug problem. Vince Coleman, I'm going to put him aside. I, I always do that. He, he was just a terror on the base paths for so many years. I don't know that he was a great guy to be around, but Cecil Fielder had his one year glory. All right. All right, we're getting down to it now. Let's see what uh, comes out of here. Really hoping I can get a, a Nolan Ryan out of here or one of those Ted Williams inserts or a hologram insert would be really cool. Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer right there, I think. Right? But not making my cut to put aside. Checklist! There it is, the unsung hero. I wonder, yeah, I guess you because you couldn't look it up back then what, uh, what cards were in the set, so... Dave Winfield, I'm putting that aside. Hall of Famer, just a great, consistent hitter with a long career. Crime Dog, Fred McGriff. Nice. Oh, Ken Griffey Jr., there it is. Now, they did these kind of like multi-stage images, and I know that it was supposed to look really cool, but it's just, in my opinion, ends up looking pretty confusing. But, uh, so there's that one. Andrew McDowell. All right. Get these back in frame here. Those are the, the common cards. And most of these, these common cards I kind of stack up and then I, once I get a few thousand of those together, I give them to somebody or, or uh, get them off to somebody who would appreciate them because I just open them for fun. Tony Fernandez. I, I know that he had a, a tragic ending um, not too long ago, so maybe he'll be one of our future what happened to that guy. Pieces I'd love to learn more about his story. Greg Vaughn. Andy Van Slyke. I know a lot of Pittsburgh Pirates fans. He was maybe their favorite. Jim McKee, great pitcher. Ramon Martinez. He started off great. What were his stats later on? Because he had a great, yeah, like 20 wins, 17 wins. He was a big strikeout. I know he had yeah, 223 strikeouts that 1990 season. And then I think uh, from there on it went downhill. Oil Cane Boyd. Yeah. See, we talked about him numerous times in these videos and his struggles with uh, substance abuse. Hope he made it out okay. All right, down to the last three packs here. There we go, breaking right through these tamper resistant packages.
Jesse Orozco. Now that's a guy with a long career. Look at that. 2,000 strikeouts. Pitched in 776 games. 195 wins. And you go, Charlie. Sid Bream, big player in that early 90s Braves. John Cruck has a Philadelphia Phillies fan, what we, my wife's favorite back in the day. Matt Noakes started off with a great part of his career, but then downhill from there. That's Craig Biggio, I believe. Yep, there you go. He's a good one to keep aside. Randy Tomlin. All right. Two to go. Man, kind of a short stack of these uh, Hall, of Fam Hall of Famers and, and top stars out of this. I wonder if they're all just hiding in the high series, high member series. We should check our checklist and that will tell us. Yeah. Chris, Chris Wilkerson. Chris Sabo. Those glasses, you always remember Chris Sabo. Check him out every future time. There's Chili Davis, we learned about last time. First Jamaican uh, baseball player to make the major leagues. Danny Tartable there. Roberto Hernandez. Oh, there's a Ted Williams insert. Just a regular one, but this is the one from his 1939 rookie season. So that's pretty cool. Pull that aside. Uh, Willie Banks and Randy Myers. All right, last one. Let's see what we got. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. These look like baseball players to me, but nobody I'm terribly excited about. Another Cubs catcher, Rick Wilkins. Jim Abbott, always an inspiring story. Juan Gonzalez, we'll take him aside. Quality player throughout his career. Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. Uh, you guys might know my feelings about him, which is questionable about whether he should be in the Hall or not, but there's another Fred McGriff. Dan Wilson, and that'll do it. So let's take a look at Rico Bronia. This is his top prospect card. So before he had really put some time in here, and uh, I know he had to end up playing for the Phillies at one point. So let's take a look on Wikipedia. Rico Bronia. I just remember them being announced in that way. Uh, played for the Tigers, the Mets, the Phillies, the Red Sox, and the Braves over nine seasons. First round pick by the Tigers. Let's see here. Oh, he was the, in 1995, hit the first ever home run at the Colorado Rockies new stadium, Coors Field. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, went to the Phillies for 96 and... Etc. Etc. Look at those overall stats here. We've got 269 average, 106 home runs, 458 RBI. So honestly, nothing to write home about. I just remember him being a really fun player to watch with the Phillies. Uh, so he resigned. No, so let's, let's see what happened here. He managed a few times. We stayed in baseball a good bit. Um, Returned to Washington High School, Gridiron, special teams and defensive and line coach. Oh, there you go. He's a football coach. Uh, player information coach. Oh, he uh, came down with testicular cancer in 2015. Then he went underwent surgery. 2017, he was hired as the coach of the Reading Fighting Phils. All right, I used to go to those games all the time. I used to live. I used to live in Douglasville, Pennsylvania, not too far from Reading. Super fun to go to those Reading Phillies games. I didn't realize he was the the coach there for at least a couple of years. Personal life, married. Uh, his high school, one of his high school friends. Oh, that's awesome. And they have two children, Alexa Grace and Hunter. So looks like he stayed in sports, but a multi-talented guy with football and other things. And then went back and coached for the Fighting Phillies and the Reading, the Reading Phillies. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I will be back with more packs at another time. Until then, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy this beautiful Sean Dunstan card and all it has to offer to my personal collection. Maybe I'll show you guys that sometime soon. Anyway, catch you later.